Hey everyone and welcome to the part 3, I hope you enjoyed previous two parts and in this one we're gonna try to make uh, that texture okay so we're gonna try to replicate it as close as possible but the idea is just to you know show you the notes and show you the tools in substance how you can basically create something that might look like this okay so this is how the final texture uh, looks like and I got it from uh, straight from substance and obviously here you can see some material tricks and uh, some additional effects how it might look um, in the end okay so it's just a simple impact uh, decal effect okay cool so now let's jump into Photoshop and the steps we're gonna take we're gonna use and start with this uh, generator um, turn that into a circle and blur some stuff and then I think I came to this basically uh, by random so we're gonna see how to basically create uh, something like this okay, and we're gonna add some details on top and we're gonna end up with a I hope something that will be close to uh, that texture okay and also we're gonna have a plenty of options how to uh, modify those and uh, you know make it to uh, look a little bit different because uh, we're gonna end up with uh, many things that we can actually change uh, in our nodes okay cool so let's jump into substance now Okay, so I'm gonna to start with generator. So go down into noises and drag that one um, into your graph. I'm gonna rotate it and reduce the Y amount to something closer to maybe, um, um, let's go with 60. And I'm gonna keep for an X amount. I'm gonna reduce the smoothness as well. Uh, those are parameters that I'm actually gonna tweak later on, but for now I just need a, you know, just a basic version of this node. Um, I'm gonna map it to the circle using shape mapper and pattern amount set to one with radius zero and width set to one as well. I'm gonna blur it just for the uh, controls which I will need later and I'm gonna radial blur, blur that one as well. Okay. Right, the next thing is I want to actually use slope blur but this time I'm gonna take this and use it as a slope and our soft circle from the shape node that one will be the grayscale so as you can see I'm kind of trying to create those lines um, that I'm going to use as, um, for the cracks and for the shape of the texture. Okay, so as you can see, we're kind of gen generating those here already. Uh, so play with the settings, but for me, I would just want to max the samples and maybe, you know, reduce uh, that one. Also, I want to go back to the blur and actually, you know, make those to be more something like this, maybe. Again, those are the variables that we'll be tweaking later on as well. Okay, so um, I'm going to do the same thing for the radial blur. Actually, I'm just going to reuse this. Okay, um, now I just want to blend those together. I'm going to use maybe, maybe, definitely not add. I'm not sure if multiply is going to work, but Let's have it on copy for now. Mm, or actually maybe, okay, I don't wanna blend those actually. So what I want to do is, let's see if we actually can we use another slope and radial blur to be uh, the slope for this, uh, uh, for this node, okay? So actually I'm gonna get rid of that one, run this one through blur so we can have a same control as we have for this node and plug it in here okay all right so i'm going to reduce the intensity as you can see we're kind of getting those rounded lines here um, and those uh, lines that goes from the center to the outside of the texture so to illustrate that a little bit better let's separate it so i'm going to have um, our shape 
I'm gonna go for the soft circle again and what I want to do I just want to multiply it so we can hide the outside um, edges okay so as you can see we're kind of getting rid of this uh, space so we are basically having like a circular texture and in this example I want to have it blurred a little bit and blend it okay and this node actually gonna reveal the lines so what I want to do I want to set this to subtract Right, and when I did this first time, because to be, I'll be honest with you, I discovered this by mistake. So when I did it first time, I noticed like, okay, there is like something here, but it's not much there, right? So I decided to run it through auto levels and see if um, Substance can actually, you know, make an average for me. And I noticed, okay, there's something there. And then I run it through a histogram scan. So I have a full control over those lines. Okay, so we are getting something, but it's definitely not um, the thing that we want. So now would be a good idea to go back in the graph and try adjust things. You know, just try adjust all those values that you've created already. So as you see, we're kind of getting some of the lines. Mm, we might even go back to the to our slope and you know play with those settings as well. So for example, ramping up the samples. Or changing intensity as you can see we're kind of getting some lines here and um, something that might look like a, a ground impact uh, texture so for now let's keep going and then later on we will be going back and you know tweaking various nodes trying to achieve the look that we like but the idea in this tutorial is to give you a, a tools basically so you can have an idea how to create those lines okay and, and obviously you can tweak them later on so uh, i'm gonna put gradient notes so i can get some colors in and i'm gonna drop red here and here will be um, a yellow okay for now i'm just gonna leave it as it is because obviously this is not what we want i also want to add glow to this just so we can see the colors i'm gonna set the glow to be a little bit more yellow or orange ish and tweak the value or actually i'm gonna leave the values default and now let's add a little bit more glow um, to this to the edges going outwards and going inwards as well with the control that we can tweak later on so i'm going to use slope i'm going to go for the shape and soft circle ramp up the samples and as you can see we can control and the gradient going outwards and we want we need another one going inwards so i'm just going to copy paste this one and set it to minus now I'm going to blend those two together. I'm going to move those so I can make some space because we'll be expanding this graph. And now I want to blend this with the uh, this original uh, texture, which are lines. So as you can see, I have now this, but I have to go back to this blend and set it to add as well. So I can have both of those in the, in the blend node. So when I'm gonna plug this in, we've got a little bit more data and we're actually getting some sort of uh, glows there, okay? Another thing is to get rid of um, some random parts of that texture. So I'm gonna use tile sampler for this. I'm gonna go for disk. I'm gonna set values to maybe seven. I'm gonna scroll down to position random max it and maybe offset somewhere in the middle mm, also be cool to have those uh, to be a, a random scale so i'm just gonna go up and here is scale random put it to maybe 0.75 okay so now maybe let's try to warp it i'm gonna use perlin noise so as you can see, obviously the scale of the parallel noise is way too high. So I'm just going to go with something like this. So we can have like a random shapes and I'm going to run it through blur with the default values and see if I can now subtract it from, uh, from the texture we've made so far. 
Mm, I think the order is not correct, so I'm just going to revert the order. And as you can see now, you have a opacity control, so you can decide which errors you want to get rid of. Okay, if you want to get rid of some you know, different positions, you might either go to Perlin Noise and play with this order, or you can go back to the Tile Sampler and play with their random position. So let's plug this back in. Okay, so we're kind of getting somewhere, but it's obviously not quite there yet. So uh, let's maybe blur it just a little bit. So I'm going to plug this in and now control the intensity here. Okay, the next thing is I want to get rid of the middle bit here. I mean, it's my personal preference. You might not want it to, but I just feel it looks better without it. Okay, so I'm just going to go with uh, just simple shape, uh, the soft circle. And I'm going to send the blend node to subtract. And I can go back to the circle and just adjust its scale to something like uh, this. I think I want to blur it a little bit as well, or run it through warp. It's up to you, but I want to blur it. Okay. I'll scale this down a little bit, so I'm only getting rid of the center. Okay, so now we've got this, basically. So I'm going to double click on the glow, so I can actually see what I'm doing, and I'm going to go way back to the beginning and see what I can tweak in order to achieve um, some good looking texture. But I think this serves as a, a you know good base for us. Oh, sorry, the one more bit I want to actually add is the auto levels, just in case, because I want a substance to uh, normalize the values for, uh, for me. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our previous note, that the first note, and I'm going to play with the values. See what's going to happen if I'll increase them or decrease them. Okay, so that's 120. I'm still going to go with 60. I just want to show you what um, could be done with those. Uh, I'll set to 4 previously. Maybe let's go with 5. Uh, if I'll tick tick box, obviously that's not ideal. What about smooth? Okay, so we are getting some sort of lines, but not the ones that we after, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the next one, which is blur. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna stick with this, maybe. And now maybe go back and play with smoothness, see if it gives us anything. Okay, I think it does, actually. Okay, so I'm going to st maybe stick to 0.07. Okay, radial blur next, because we went with the default settings, I think. Yeah, just minor adjustments, I think. As it doesn't give us well, what we want, I guess. Although this might be pretty cool. Yeah, so playing with angle. Uh, gives us some results. Slope, well, let's go back to this slope maybe first, see what it, we can achieve. What about samples? Okay, next slope. So I just want to modify it just a little bit. Okay. Uh, here is the blur of this. So we're basically subtracting uh, those two in here. So by smoothing this, we should get a little bit more highlights, I think. Yeah, okay. So if you want to, you know, sharp lines, you might want to uh, go with the low intensity but if you want this to be a little bit more blurred, then feel free to just increase it. I'm going to stick maybe to one point. Um, 1.2 maybe. Auto levels, histogram scanner. 
Yeah, so I think we can control the intensity using this. So I'm gonna maybe ramp it up high and play with the contrast. No, I think that looks a little bit better. So I'm gonna stay with this. What else we can control? Oh, we can go back to the tile sampler, for example, and we can increase the scale of the, the areas that we want to get rid of. So as you can see, we can make this pattern a little bit more random. Okay. Okay, so one more thing before we plug this in here, let's maybe add additional intensity to the whole texture. So I'm going to blend it with shape choose the soft circle, blend it in and um, blending mode set it to add. So obviously this will be way too bright now, but we can control it through the opacity. So if you want to just, you know, add a little bit more data here, because I think we need that data in the engine. Okay, the other thing that you might do, you might plug and this noise into the alpha although you probably have to invert it so invert grayscale and plug it into alpha and basically you're gonna get this uh, a highlight only in those areas okay but I think it might be a good idea to even you know warp that uh, grayscale with the parallel noise just so we have we can have a, a little bit uh, different results so I just want to warp it a little bit uh, using different uh, scale on the parallel noise and maybe I want to go back to this blend and yeah, reduce it a little bit so we can get those uh, lines back. And now in the gradient map, let's see if we can actually tweak this a little bit. So we can get the glow in those uh, lines. Okay. So I think the lines are a little bit uniform, but now you have uh, this graph and feel free to play with it because, you know, you can make a lot of adjustments now. You can go to, you know, first texture, try to smoothing those out. And I think, you know, it's going to actually give us a bit more random results, as you can see here. Okay, if you don't like the uh, X amount, you can just reduce it to whatever you like or whatever it's needed for the project. So as you can see, I'm just going to maybe go with four. I'm going to take a couple boxes, see what they do. Um, change those values, basically. Um, okay, so I think you've got like a, a graph now that you can control and adjust to whatever you need, I think. Okay, so I'm going to just play with those settings for another minute to see what I can make out of this texture. Okay, that's cool. So I want those lines. So as you can see, I'm just, you know, playing with values, trying to see what those um, changing those values actually gives me to the, you know, actually what it adds to the texture. I think this is pretty cool control so again I'm just you know subtracting those two from each other and you know I've got like a single control in terms of um, how fine I want those lines to be so I think for game uh, projects I think some going for something like this and the texture might be uh, might be a good idea so we end up with that kind of texture all right so let me maybe put that texture in the game engine so we can actually see how it behaves 
uh, with the shader I come up with, okay? Okay, so I've imported exact this texture that we made in Substance now. So if I press play, you can see how it behaves. And to be honest, I think it's just got not enough uh, grayscale values in that texture. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to Substance now. Okay, and as you can see, I already experimented with it. So I've added Levels node, but I'm gonna do it with you. So I'm gonna add Levels node. Plug it back in, so our colors, and in the levels note, I'm just gonna, you know, bring back some of the white values. Okay, but I wanna also, you can see here, you've got the circle, so I'm just gonna move this just a little bit so we can have a, a bit more random shape. Okay, so I'm gonna save it and go into Photoshop, paste this one, and I'm gonna export this into the engine. Okay, so I've imported it in, and as you can see, now it's got a little bit too much um, of the data. Okay, so now we have to go back. Um, so let's do it in here maybe, and yeah, let's just get rid of some of the brightness from it. It's very sensitive, so be careful. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to Photoshop, paste that one in, and save it into the engine. Okay, so, um, as you can, you can see, there's a, a lot of uh, back and forth between Substance and the game engine, uh, you know, trying to get something that uh, you might find useful. So as you can see, I've imported this one and I think this one is a, a lot more balanced uh, texture, okay? So again, projectile hits the ground and you got this uh, impact effect. Right, so I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, let me know how you think about this uh, part in the end when I actually went through between Substance and Engine. Let me know if you would like to see more of those and, uh, you know, me trying to modify the, the textures uh, to make them, you know, look a little bit better in the engine. If you, you know, if you struggle with this, just let me know and maybe I will, uh, you know, include that in those videos. So whenever we will be making the texture, there will be a you know, part of the video me going into the engine and, you know, trying to fine tune the values uh, in order to make it look better in the engine. Okay, so again, let me know if you enjoyed it. I think those textures will be available um, to some of my Patreon tier. So if you want just to grab them, feel free to head to Patreon and uh, yeah. All right, thank you so much.